to transfer the tracking data to Modo, we need to select the tracks that we want to go over. So I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to select position, scale and rotation. And to do that I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the rotation and that will highlight all three. With all these three tracks selected, I'm going to go up to the edit menu and I'm just going to use the copy function. And that's going to put that tracking information into the computer's clipboard. Uh, and now we can switch over to Modo. In Modo, we need something to apply the data to. Now, since we use a null object in After Effects, we might as well use Modo's equivalent, and that is a locator. So I'm going to go up to the Add Item over here on the right. And under Recent, you can see I've uh, used the locator recently, but it's also top of the list down here. So let's add ourselves a locator item. Uh, and this will obviously come in at world zero, which is fine. And what we want to do now, now we've got this selected, basically the way the After Effects um, AE panel works is it applies data or it, it exports or imports data to whichever current object you have selected in the list over here. So if I have the locator object selected, then whichever channels I've got under the import option selected down here, these channels will become imported from the clipboard into Modo. Now, there's a number of things here you need to be aware of. Uh, this most important thing is to make sure that we set the start and end frames. These will probably be different when you first set up your system. You may remember that I set the timeline from 0 to 149. This will probably be something different. And it's very important that uh, if it is, that you match the timeline that we set up earlier. And you may remember we went to the settings dialog and we set the scene start and end to 0 to 149. We need to make sure that's matched here. We doesn't have to because obviously you can bring in just part of a track from uh, After Effects for more complex things. But you know, we want to bring in the whole track. Uh, so we're not exporting at the moment, but I've just put it into the export field. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is down here, you can see the start is at zero and hidden away is the end frame and we want to make sure that is also set uh, for the import to 149. So we've now set the start and end frame import. You'll see this thing called a multiplier here. There's one down here and there's also a value up here. This is mentioned in the forum if you read that forum thread uh, by Abbott and it's basically his calculation on what a millimeter in Modo turns up inside After Effects in pixels. So it's a relationship. You'll see when I hover over it, it says factor for conversion of one After Effects millimeter in one Modo millimeter. So this is the relationship um, that's been worked out for this script between Modo and After Effects. So best to leave this value alone for the moment. And what I've got here, as you can see on the import, I've not got focal length selected because we're not importing camera. We're just importing object data. And you may remember we copied the position and rotation values to the to the clipboard um, or in fact we copied all of them including scale so with all of this lot selected and the locator over here selected the data on the current computer clipboard can be simply uh, imported using the uh, the features here now you'll notice at the bottom here you've got export and likewise down here you've got import um, it's hidden because I'm using screencast so I have to click on this little uh, icon to get the full, um, full menu so here is import file or import from clipboard so if we had saved out an ASCII text file from After Effects we'd use this option here but it's on the computer clipboard so let's go import from clipboard and that's now done it and actually what you can see is you can see all the keyframe data has appeared in the timeline down here you'll also notice that the null object has shifted and if we look in the perspective viewport here and I scroll around a bit you'll notice that the object has now also shifted slightly uh, in, you know, now that it's got keyframe data applied to it from After Effects. Now you'll also notice that it's, it's not right. You'll notice that it's down here in my chest and it's supposed to be up here in my eye. And in fact if I um, drag the time slider you'll see that it moves alright and it's got all the rotation and everything as you know, we'd expect but it's down here on my chest which isn't very useful. And there's a reason for that. Uh, it's because, you know, Modo won't do anything without a camera. We are actually looking through a camera. And you can see up here it says we're looking through 
an object called camera and we only have the one camera on a scene that's this one here and this is what we're looking through and we can see it over here in the perspective viewport so Modo requires a camera to render anything so you know if I want to render anything in Modo including particles you know I have to have a camera to look through After Effects of course does not require a camera it's a layer based compositor and you can literally just load up a load of images stack them on top of each other and layer them on top and it's absolutely fine with that you can work in 3D but you have to specifically tell After Effects to work in 3D so this is the problem uh, we don't know what the camera in After Effects is in relation to camera in Modo and that's why this null is not in the right place so we need to set up that relationship uh, the other thing to note that's very important is Mocha tracks in 2D only it's a you know it's not a 3D tracker although it is true that Mocha Pro can generate a 3D cap resolve as can the advanced uh, Mocha AE plugin the real thing is that the data that we're taking out is 2D. We've done a track, and although it says position scalar rotation, there is no Z depth because in Mocha it's tracking planes and it tracked this image, and this image is a flat image. And typically, what we want to do is the image will be at zero. So here is world zero in Modo, right here, and this is Z zero or Z zero. And you'll notice that the locator. Uh, is on that zero line in Z. So the data that we've applied to the locator is only positioning the X and the Y. That's what's being altered by this keyframe information. So if we go to the um, Animate tab, for example, and we open up the Curve Editor, you can see the locator's information here. So here's the X, here's the Y, and the Z is flatlined. And the reason it's flatlined is because there is, you know, the Z is zero. So basically we have a keyframe for every frame and that keyframe is at zero. This is normal because that's what Mocha generates, that's how it works. You know, you, you can't make 3D that doesn't exist um, in you know in Mocha. So let's go back to the um, setup tab. So what we need to do now is we need to fix this relationship. We need to get this null object up here where my eye is. And to do that, we need to get the camera uh, out of After Effects. So we need to go back to After Effects now and sort that out. We need to add a camera to our After Effects project and make it 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the layer menu select new and select new camera now when this comes up we need to check a few parameters you may remember we had a look at the camera in Modo and we know that the film back size is 36 millimeters so that's the same and this is important if it is not the same or if you're using a completely different camera in Modo one that's matched to a camera that you shot with you need to make sure that you match the horizontal film back size here with the one in Modo Likewise, you need to make sure that you're matching the focal length. So, for example, you'll note here it says 75 millimeters. Well, we had a look in Modo, and we know that in Modo we were using a 50 millimeter camera. So, we need to make sure these two match. Uh, the other thing to note is we don't want a two-node a two camera. A two-node camera gives you a camera with what's called a target ahead of it, and this is an object in After Effects that you can actually animate, uh, and it controls where the camera is looking. We don't have that in Modo we just have XYZ rotation on the camera so we want to make sure this is a one node camera and then I'm going to come down here and make sure this focal length is set to 50 and we just want to check a few other things here that all looks good notice down here it says measure film size horizontally so that's the film back is a horizontal measurement the 36 millimeters that's not the vertical measurement the other thing is it's set to millimeters, so that's our relationship that we're working with in Modo. So everything else is good here, there's nothing else we really need to change. So with that done, I'm just going to go OK, and that's going to create our camera. So we now have our camera inside of After Effects. Now, although we now have a camera, and we can check this by coming up here, and I'm going to switch to a dual view. So here we are, here's my comp over here, and my view through the active camera now. And here's the camera back here in, and then down here is our comp space uh, and this line here is obviously centered on the zero line of our, our world space in 3D this is our Z0 effectively here now we don't yet have a 3D comp because although we have a camera we also need to make sure our object is now in 3D space 
otherwise it's not going to work at the moment our null object here in the viewport is in 2d space only and you can see that down here by looking at position it's just got an x and y value so we need to make sure that the track i null is a 3d object so i'm going to come down here and switch it to a 3d object and immediately you'll notice that not only has it now got xyz gizmos so it can be dragged around but you'll notice it jumped to the z plane here in the comp as we're looking down from above because we're in the top view the null is now at z z0 and that is exactly matching the data out of mocha it's exactly matching what's in modo at the moment the the null is at zero and we'll notice if we look at the position we now have three values and the last value z is zero and it's going to be zero for every single frame so that has now given us the the you know necessary values for the null object so you can see down here you've got our z rotation still as before and we can copy this data well we don't actually have to copy this data back into modo because all we've done is tell after effects it's in three in a 3d space now we already have this in modo it's working it's at zero on z in modo the x and the y values are working fine but we do need it set up in After Effects so that we're working with a complete 3D environment to make sure it's all working here. So you can see here, for example, uh, it's working. What we need to do now is get the camera in because the camera has, is the one that's got this relationship to the null object here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up the camera and look at the transform channels for the camera. I'm just going to slide this up a bit, give us a bit more real estate. And here we are, we have the camera, we have position, orientation, the separate rotation channels, and we also have the camera options. If I open that up, you'll notice that we have a load of camera options, but the most important one to us is our focal distance. You'll notice it's set here in pixels. Now, that's an After Effects thing, because After Effects works in, in pixel values. We need to get this data into Modo, and to do that, what I'm going to do is set keyframes for all of these just at world zero. Now, the camera's a static camera. You'll notice that the camera in the shot that I'm using does not move. It's a lock-off, uh, so all the tracking data is just me tracking my eye. The camera is static, so we want a static camera. But to get the keyframe data into Modo, I'm just going to force a keyframe at zero on all the channels that I want to take in and I want to take position and orientation obviously there are no scale values for a camera and I also want to take our focus distance because the focal length is kind of important so with that set what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click on position orientation and focus and I'm going to come up to the edit menu and I'm going to go copy and that's put it on the computer clipboard again so that we can now transfer that data to Modo Back in Modo, the first thing we want to do is check our camera. So let's go over here, select the camera in the item list, switch to the camera view so we can see the properties panel, make sure properties is set here. And here we can see we've got a 50mm focal length and we have a 36mm film back, so that's all good. And currently, as you know, Modo has a default camera, so it's got a slight down rotation in the Y, which you can see over here in the, um, yeah, in the perspective viewport, and it's got some set values in. Uh, y and Z when it's when you first set up a Modo scene. So with the camera selected, because this is what we want to apply our data from the clipboard to, I'm going to go back over here to our panel. I'm just going to spin up the export so we can now see just the import controls. Now we have a focal length this time, and although we've matched it between the two, we're going to bring it in anyway. So I'm just going to highlight focal length, and what we want to do is we want to bring in uh, rotation well we want to be in rotation and position the camera doesn't have any scale so you can just turn these off you could leave it anyway because it usually just ignores the data but basically we can just turn it off so we're going to bring in focal length rotation information and positional information our start frame as before is set to 0 to 149 and we know we want to leave this multiplier alone so let's just go import from clipboard and suddenly you'll see our camera has kind of jumped to its new location and we still can see we've got a problem. You'll notice it's better, it, but it's kind of floating above my he head. So we need to th think, figure out what's gone wrong here, that something's gone wrong. And if we go to the 
animate menu as we did before and let's have a look at the curves let's see what we've got we've got uh, an X a Y and a, a Z value and we can have a look over here and see what those values are uh, we've also got rotational values and interesting enough if you look here there are no keyframes and the camera still got its original minus five degree rotational value and this isn't correct because we know that the camera in After Effects is at zero the rotation X is actually at zero and that means that the data has not been pasted over you can see that the red keyframes here have pasted data at frame zero and nothing's been pasted and that that's because we've basically got the wrong rotational channels from After Effects and what we have to do is we have to go back to After Effects and make sure we're actually exporting the correct channels for this script to work so let's pop back to After Effects and fix this now the error I have made is that I've basically keyed the orientation here now this is often a parameter that you'll animate in After Effects anyway it's quite normal but what the script and modo needs is it needs the three separate rotational channels here this is what it's actually wanting to look for um, and take the keyframe data from so to that end I'm just going to click off here to deselect these tracks I'm going to click on the little stopwatch icon to disable the orientation because we don't need it it's not working and I'm now going to key at zero in the timeline the X Y and Z rotations so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select position and then hold down control select X Y and Z and then I'm going to select the focus so with all those selected again I'm going to come up here go back to the edit menu and go copy and now we can switch back to Modo and resolve the fix let's switch back to the setup tab and I've still got the camera selected up here and again because we've got the start frame and end frame already selected when I import from the clipboard it's going to actually just overwrite everything that's already in the, the camera channels so again we've got all of these correct parameters set here and I'm simply just going to import from clipboard again and notice immediately you saw the camera tilt up then so now we fixed our problem and if we look over here on the right in the properties you'll see that the rotation channels are now red that means they've been keyed uh, at frame zero and um, we can obviously double check that by going to the animation tab and again you can see that we now actually have a keyframe on the rotation channels that we didn't have before so let's go back to setup and what we can see now is lo and behold the locator is now right where my pupil is this is kind of what we want now the locator is a bit huge so I'm just going to select the locator select the display tab I'm just going to size it down a bit just so it's a bit less obvious there we go that's a bit better point one so let's play that and see what we've got so there we are we have a locator that is now tracking to my eye we can see that better better just let me maximize the viewport and here we go so here we are we now have a locator in 3d space yes it is at um, world zero um, on the z-axis because that's the way the data comes from Mocha there is, ne there is no z information but we do have a locator that is now in three-dimensional space inside a modo so if we kind of have a look at our perspective view over here uh, and maximize that you can see we now have a little world set up with a camera looking at a null object and, um, or a locator in Modo's terms and if I play you can see the locator doing its thing in front of the camera which is exactly kind of what we want so now that we have that we can actually start using the locator to control other things inside of Modo now we've done quite a bit of work so let's do the sensible thing uh, and save the Modo scene since we're now about to play with the particle system so I'm just going to come down here and do save as and select our After Effects IO project scenes and let's call this After Effects I IO demo and just give it a version number 
Okay, so that's just in case we have a crash, which as we all know happens in the wonderful world of software. Okay, so let's do something with this locator. Now, the idea was to work with particles, so let's go and do that. We are in the setup panel, so let's switch ourselves to the particle. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to add a radial emitter to the scene. Now, we know that once we have an emitter in, we can simply press the simulate button down here. We can see our particles spraying out. Uh, they're a bit small, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the particle simulation. I'm just going to up the size a bit. That way they'll be a bit more obvious in the viewport. And let's set a colour for them instead of white. So let's just do something garish. Bright green, favourite. There we go, bright green. So should be able to miss that. Okay, so let's make this do something useful. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to start altering some of the aspects of the uh, radial emitter. So I'm just going to select the radial emitter in the item list. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the cone angle. So let's just uh, get that nice and small so it's spraying out in a sort of, sort of line. And what I'm actually also going to do is I want to rotate it so maybe it's spraying towards the camera. Now, one thing I haven't done yet, you'll notice, is I need to have a relationship between this emitter and the locator. So obviously it's the locator that's moving and I want my particle system to move. So the easiest way to do that is to use a feature in the setup tab called match position. So just for ease I'm just going to go make sure I'm set in item mode. I'm going to press the W key or I can come over here, select the transform tool. And I'm just going to move the emitter out here. So our locator is down here and our emitter is over here and what I'm going to do is with the radial emitter selected I'm going to hold down control and select my locator and then I'm going to come over here to the setup tab select setup and down here go match item position and what that will do is it will snap the radial emitter to the position of the locator and since we're at frame zero in the timeline that's where it's snapped it to and what I want to do is wherever the um, the locator goes I want the emitter to go to. So the simple solution for that is to parent it. So I'm just going to click off, click on the radial emitter. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it on the locator. It's now a parent or a child of the locator. So now we can see that the radial emitter has got rotational information from the locator. It's got the position information. So all I want to do now is I want to point this at the camera. So at the moment as you can see the emitter is pointing up which isn't what we want. If you think about the relationship we've got here, um, you know, basically what we've got is our image plane is back here. So if I just minimize this for a moment, you can see that the emitter is looking up, which uh, kind of isn't terribly useful. We want it to be pointing towards us. So I'm just going to rotate it. So uh, let's go and select rotate, and we can just rotate it in the X. And I can come over here and you can see it's 55.8 degrees. So I'm just going to click here, type in 90. And that's now 90 degrees, so it's pointing at us. So we can see, if we look in the viewport here, that the emitter is now pointing more towards us. And if we play, you can see as I move around, the emitter is pointing you know, approximately towards the camera. So we can play around this if we need to. And if we don't feel it's right, but... What we need to do is we want to be able to see the particles coming out and to do that we need to play, if we just play the simulation as you can see the particles just spray out and the viewport doesn't update, the timeline doesn't update. To see the two together we need to play the timeline. So now you can see the animation but Moto is not able to update the viewport with my actual um, video background. so. We'll have to do a GL preview to actually see it. But at the moment, uh, what I can see is that um, I'm not quite getting the kind of look I want. So I'm just going to start playing back a simulation and I'm going to play around with the parameters here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up the emission rate quite radically so we get lots of particles. So I'm just going to drop the initial velocity down to 100. and I'm going to drop the velocity spread down to 50. 
So now we can see we've got this nice little spray going on. So if I kill it and start it again, see we've got this spray coming out. Now the particles are living forever, so I'm just going to kill them. Otherwise, they're going to, it's going to be a bit mad. So to do that, I need to go to the simulation, and I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to go maximum age. Let's try 30, and uh, let's just stop this and play it again. This will cull the particles. So it's probably still a bit too much. So let's try an even smaller number. It's 10 frames. Yeah, that's a bit better. Uh, now, I say it's a bit better, but you probably noticed um, the big mistake. I actually have to turn cull by age on. So there you go. We all make mistakes. Okay, as you can see, a bit too small. So let's put it back up again to 30. Okay, so there we go. I think I might want to, I think I'm going to tighten it up a bit. So let's, I'm going to go back to the radial emitter. And I'm just going to turn down the cone angle even more. There we go. That will do. This is just a demonstration, so it's not like I'm doing anything uber cool here. Okay, so there we have some particles spraying out. What we need now is we need to actually see the particles spraying out with motion like this. And of course we need to see that with the background animating uh, or updating as well. And to do that, the only way you can do that is we need to bake the simulation. So what I'm going to do now is come down here and select the compute simulation. Make sure the start and end frame match our timeline as before, 0 to 149. And it's a quick calculation. And now we can just use our playback controls here. And now we have our particles spraying out from my eye. There we go. And that's it. I mean, basically, what we've done now is we have taken mocker tracking data through After Effects, brought it into Modo's 3D space, and we now have our 3D world with a particle system that's got the tracking data, albeit 2D tracking data in X and Y, from mocker in After Effects. So there you go. Uh, I hope that tutorial has proved useful and let me know what you think.